Hello campers, welcome back. It's Tuesday and I'm your camp counselor, Ibby. I'm Rahid. My I'm partner in crime for the day. And before we get started, let's share some projects you guys have been posting. All right. Now, this wasn't actually posted directly to the Maker Camp community page originally, but one of our campers found it on a Minecraft community page and posted it to us because it was just so cool. Someone made, uh, I don't really know anything about Minecraft, but I'm guessing it's from the game, and they made one of the chests with a little magnetic lock. I think they did a really cool. good job, right? It's going to work for anything, really. Yeah. I like the paint job because it kind of looks weathered, but it's still like bright yellow. Yeah. Got to love bright colors. And we have some of our campers making more robots. Got to love the robots, right? <laughs> that one's really cute. It looks like it's got a bunch of like crazy pipe cleaners maybe or just wires. I don't know. Cool little antennas nice. and like purple goggles. <laughs> And we have some squishy circuits. Pretty exciting. <laughs> Colorful ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we unfortunately found some mold on our squishy circuits because we'd left it for two weeks, three weeks? A very long time. So use your squishy circuits while you can and don't let them sit there. <laughs> and we have, looks like, some robots being made out of different Lego pieces. That's really exciting. And same group. They actually made, not quite an obstacle course, but a path for their Lego robot to follow. Nice. Pretty sweet. Have you ever done anything like that? I've done it once for a project. Yeah, awesome. Nice. All right, cool. Well, thank you for posting, everybody. And let's see if we can get M on. Good hey. morning. Hi, Abby. Hi, Rahid. How's it going up there? Going well. Pretty well. Fantastic. Nice work, campers. It's good to see you uh, posting up on the Maker Camp page. Uh, so welcome back to day two of Make Believe Week here at Maker Camp. Uh, I'm your your host uh, or camp director, I should say, M Mota, and uh, today is going to be all about peanut butter vacuum forming. Uh, so our friend Adam Harris is going to walk us through today's project. Hi, Adam. Hi, guys. How are you doing? Hello. Fantastic. How are you? Great. Good, good. Where are you joining us from, Adam? I'm in uh, on vacation right now, actually, in St. Augustine, Florida. Oh, wow. Well, thank you for taking time out of your vacation to join us. Oh, um, thanks for inviting me. Absolutely. So I understand you have a, a really exciting, easy-to-do project for us today. Yeah, so um, what I have here is a vacuum-forming machine, which uh, can be used to make anything from... Um, face masks to chocolate molds and things like that and it's made out of garbage so it's actually this is a peanut butter jar and I have a water bottle inside there that hooks up to a vacuum cleaner and uh, the way this works is there's a lot of holes in the top of the lid you can see that yeah and uh, basically you put an object on top of this so this is a little car, and you heat up some plastic and put the plastic on top and then turn on the vacuum cleaner, and it sucks the plastic really tight around the object that you placed on top. And once you've done that, you get a nice exact clone wow. of the Wow, that looks object. really good. That's pretty impressive, Adam. Um, so before we dig into that, um, why don't we talk a little bit about what you do? and uh, who you are. Okay. Well, uh, I am a PhD student right now in uh, UNC Charlotte, and I'm working on my PhD in electrical engineering. I hope to be done this year sometime. So, <laughs> um, and uh, mostly focusing on embedded systems, um, things like Arduinos, but more complicated, and uh, oh. robotics. So awesome. Um, awesome. And uh, I own SheGeek.com, so that's that's uh, my store where I make robot kits and uh, things of that sort, and cool. use that. It allows me to go all over the place. I go to the maker fairs, and I have a table there, and just have a lot of fun with that. Fantastic. Um, that was SheGeek.com. Yep, it's uh, S H E E K G E E K. Cool. All right. I'll have to check that out after the show. 
Um, Ivy and Rahid, I understand you have a project you're also going to share with us later on in the show. Why don't you give us a little teaser of that? Here it is. <laughs> oh, there you go. We don't have the vacuum uh, plugged into it or the plastic. Okay, pieces. cool. Yeah. Well, it looks good. Looks professional, <laughs> Rahid. Yeah, um, colors. We'll have to see what you made after uh, after Adam shows us how to build it. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, Adam, what do you think? Should we should we get started? Yeah, we can get started. All right, let's do it. Okay, so the materials that are needed for the actual machine are an empty peanut butter jar, which I had to empty this out this past week. Uh, <laughs> an empty water bottle. That was an easy one. Okay. Um, we'll need some popsicle sticks or other material that we can glue together to make a frame to hold the plastic. Cool. Uh, the plastic itself, which I'll tell you a little more about this in a moment. <laughs> uh, and some electrical tape or duct tape and usually saran wrap or some type of clean wrap to help make everything really uh, airtight. Okay. So um, the first, are, oh, go ahead. Are there any specialty tools we should be uh, aware that we need? Uh, uh, the only specialty tools really are, I got a razor knife here, okay. um, and pliers, uh, which these are incredibly useful for all sorts of things, but this will help keep our hands cool whenever we're heating up the plastic. Gotcha. Um, and I've got some little hobby clamps to close the popsicle stick frame around the plastic. Gotcha. And this can be replaced with like a binder clip or, you know, those large paper clips. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay great. Um, that's pretty much it. Some scissors are, are useful as well. Cool. So. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's do it. Get started. Okay. All right, well, the first step is, uh, if you notice on this one, and you guys can hold yours up, there's a, uh, a bunch of holes in the top. And yours is actually better than mine. If you look, you kind of want it to be a, a really even layout of the holes. The even layout uh, allows you to put different shaped objects on the top of the peanut butter jar, and it will always get a really nice tight uh, suction around your objects. And that's good because it helps produce uh, uh, better results. So what I've done with this jar is I actually took a pencil and marked out a grid about one centimeter uh, apart. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight or anything like that. And at all of the places where the grid meets, I put a dot with a sharpie. And that represents a hole that would be drilled. Um, I don't have a drill that I can use right here, but uh, you can basically use a drill bit that would be something like um, uh, anything from a quarter inch to uh, three-eighths inch. You don't want to get anything too large, uh, but basically you just drill a bunch of tiny holes in here. It's really easy. It's fairly soft plastic, okay. and uh, you want to take it off to actually drill the holes. <laughs> Um, and I'm using a peanut butter jar for a couple of reasons. Um, this is a plastic peanut butter jar. The glass ones won't work. Uh, but peanut butter jars are really strong, so you can put a lot of pressure on there, and they, they don't collapse. And that's a very big deal, because if we're sucking a lot of air out of this, the surrounding air pressure would usually crush whatever object, like a water bottle. It's easy to crinkle and crush. Yeah. But uh, the peanut butter jar is thick enough that you don't have any of those issues. And gotcha. so it's not going to even deform, really, whenever we're uh, putting the vacuum on it. Okay. So um, hey, um, the lid... Oh. I should remind campers out there that if you have any questions for Adam Harris, uh, go ahead and post them up on the Maker Camp community page, and we'll do our best to get them answered live. Uh, sorry, Adam. Just had oh, to say that quickly. That's fine. Um, OK, so the next step is we need to cut both the peanut butter jar and the water bottle. And the way this is going to work is we're going to have this peanut butter jar standing on end, and the peanut butter jar will have a hole in it that can just uh, fit the end of the bottle. And we need to make this pretty centered. So what I like to do is put it about where I want put to, to cut the hole and mark a little dot. You might not be able to see it. 
but there's a oh, little yeah, there tiny dot. And that helps me align the bottles, because if I put it too low, then of course you can see here, this is going to be hitting the bottom, and it doesn't really work too well. Too high, but you get the same issue. Gotcha. So you want to really line it up first. And uh, I'm taking a razor knife, and I'll move my screen down so you can see what gotcha. I'm doing. Is that we good? Should, uh, we should also mention that um, this step might be, uh, it might require an adult. It definitely would re require adult supervision or help. So yes. um, go yes, ahead, Adam. Thank you. Okay, so um, the easiest way to cut a hole in this, you can't cut a circle very easily, uh, but a diamond shape is pretty easy to cut. So I usually take the knife and do a small incision and then I will go over that same incision multiple times. Can you guys see the... Uh... Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you don't have to push hard. If you push hard, you, you want to make sure that you're not going to go through and cut too deep or too wide of a hole. So just take your time, and yeah. you'll start to get all the way through. Yeah. Those peanut butter jars are, are uh, actually, like you said, really strong. So it, it takes a... Uh, a little bit to cut through it. Um, Adam, how big of a hole are we after here? Uh, about a one inch by one inch diamond shape. Gotcha. Um, it could be a bit bigger than that, um, but not too much smaller because you really want uh, the tip to fit out and the base here to be stuck inside. Gotcha. So, and the diamond shape is really good because it's easy to hold the bottle as you're cutting it yeah, to okay. a diamond shape. So, so Adam is taking his time because he's got a very sharp blade there and uh, it's not easy to cut through that peanut butter jar. Yeah, so adult supervision, as you said, is recommended. Uh, so um, let's see, we, we've actually got a bunch of camper questions coming in, so maybe we can take a moment to do that. Okay. Ibby and Rahid, do you want to throw Adam a few questions? Sure. Uh, one of our campers, Craig, is wondering, how did you get the idea for the vacuum former? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I'll continue cutting this out a little bit. But uh, basically, I've always been interested in manufacturing and, and design, and I kind of always just want to be able to make anything that I can come up with. And so uh, I started looking around for simple plastic uh, molding techniques, something that I could do in my home. And I came across vacuum forming. And actually in the uh, 60s and 70s, there was a kit that was a toy by Mattel Company that would actually allow kids to make their own vacuum formed car bodies and things like that for like matchbox cars and other toys. Oh. And so just based off that idea, I uh, was looking around my house at something that I could build it out of in pretty much five or ten minutes just to get a, a test model. And I found a peanut butter jar. And it had all the properties I was looking for. It was sturdy. It was, uh, well, a bonus is that it was clear, so you could actually kind of see all the guts of it. That's another thing that I really like, is seeing the guts of machines. Um, and I just kind of worked with it until I had a working model. So that's, that's kind of how I came up with the idea. That's awesome. And what size peanut butter jar is that? Do you know? Uh, this was actually a smaller one, um, but just a standard size of any brand that has a good plastic case. Um, some of them are glass. You won't be able to cut that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's others that are really flimsy. You can kind of feel them, and they're very thin. Um, they'll feel more like a water bottle. And you really don't want to use those because they're too thin. So, And okay. here you can see I haven't got the hole quite big enough. Um, but just keep working with it in, in small areas here to uh, lengthen each side of the hole. You don't want to overdo it 
Camper Jenna has a question. Uh, could you use the nozzle of a soda or seltzer bottle instead of a water bottle? Oh, yeah. Uh, soda bottles are actually better because they're designed to be pressurized. So yeah. they can That's actually good. handle um, more uh, suction without collapsing. Water mm -hmm. bottles yeah. are, are very thin, um, but I noticed that they're, they have a smaller opening here. So um, not very much smaller, but just small enough that I can fit it inside a uh, vacuum tube uh, or a vacuum cleaner attachment hose. And so... Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. Camper Jenna has a, another question here. Uh, she's wondering, is that plastic from a gallon water bottle? Uh, and I'm guessing it's that sheet of white plastic that you're actually going to use to form with. Yes, that's exactly what it's from. You can nice. see here, you can kind of see the uh, the edges. It's actually from a plastic water bottle or a plastic milk jug. Okay. And so even the material that you're using is recycled material. Fantastic. So. I like that. That's cool. So you said you got into vacuum forming because of like little kits with the cars and stuff. What do you <laughs> use it for now? Um, well, currently, uh, the, the peanut butter vacuum former is pretty small. But uh, currently, I, I use it for basically just making copies and things like molds uh, so I can make copies of objects. So uh, for instance, I have here Tiny Brain. This is an eraser. And if you wanted to do something really neat, like claymation or something like that, you want a bunch of these little brains to put on different models, you can make a clone of that brain and then take some polymer clay. And first you want to actually coat this with a little bit of uh, cornstarch powder, like ba baby powder, and coat it on the inside. That'll be a release agent so that it doesn't stick too much to the plastic. And then use this polymer clay to smash into the mold. Hmm. And then you can peel it out. And, well, that one didn't come out too well because I squished it, but uh, you can kind of see the results there. Yeah. So you can quickly make a lot of uh, basically a bunch of little clones of the same objects. So that's, that's the main reason that I use it nowadays. Hmm. Let's see, uh, Adam, we've got a question here for you. Uh, ben is wondering, could you drill a hole for the water bottle instead of cutting the hole out? Ah, uh, yes, that would be quicker. Um, I am just currently in uh, another state, so I don't have my, my regular kit, my drill press, and all that. So, gotcha. um, so would you use uh, kind of a, a hole saw type situation? Yeah, a hole saw would be okay. perfect for that. Um, you would just drill over and over again uh, just the outside with the hole saw until you get a perfectly uh, round cut there. Gotcha. Uh, but now that I have this hole cut, I can finally start working with the bottle. So nice. you look at how this is going to fit in there. Uh, we only need just the end here. So I'm going to cut the tip of this off. So this one is much thinner and very much easier to cut. Looks like. <laughs> yeah. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, this is the machine itself is pretty reliable, even if it, things aren't very very precise. So just shove it in there. Spin it to the side, and there we go. So now we have this bottle sticking out of the end. Well, how do we keep it uh, from wobbling around and falling inside and make this airtight? We're so, going to use our, our favorite tool, Adam, duct tape. Well, duct tape, electrical tape. Um, another thing that I found that works really, really well is actually uh, cellophane wrap. So I have here some clean wrap, and you just see if I can, I can never pull this off straight, but, <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> so what I like to do with this is uh, a couple of things. You can actually uh, cover the entire body, oh, there we go, cover the entire body of it, 
and then cut a hole. Um, but another really th good thing you can do is kind of bunch it up on one end until it's almost like a thread and tie it around the rim of the bottle. Ooh. And then it kind of makes a gasket. And so it makes it fit a little better. Of course, okay. we need the hole for the lid to pop off. So we can unscrew the lid here and cellophane it in place. And then, of course, everyone's favorite tool, the tape. <laughs> and I found it was pretty easy to just make a band of tape around the, uh, the top and bottom. Okay. So we have the top, and then we have the bottom here. And this should be ready to go. Well, except that I haven't drilled the holes in this lid. But um, other than that, it's ready to go. So well, it's can... a pretty quick and easy process, Adam. Yeah, it's, um, it's very quick. Okay. Could we take this uh, this uh, method of, of vacuum forming and kind of scale it up if we were to find bigger containers? Absolutely. Um, okay. Usually, you don't want to go with just found objects for the larger ones. Um, it's easier to just build a box out of wood. And uh, if you notice the the pegboard that's behind uh, Ibby here yeah. is perfect yeah. material. Yeah, nice. Okay. So it's already got all the holes drilled and everything. So if you yeah. build one of these larger uh, for making maybe like body armor or something like that, um, you can just simply cut a piece of that pegboard and put it on the top of a wooden box. And you could still use a, a water bottle or something on the end for the hose connection, or right. you could use PVC connectors. Okay. Um, and it, it's a little bit more sturdy. This is kind of like your quick and dirty. You absolutely have to make a copy of something this big. Yeah. You know, this is what you can do. Well, I really like it because it's it's made out of recycled materials. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it's it's all garbage basically. So, yeah. um, cool. but now that we have a vacuum former. I'll uh, show you guys how it works. So, and are there any more questions along the way? Yeah, um, we've got a few questions, but they might be a little bit more relevant as we as we go further along in the project. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So, uh, to begin with, I have the original one here. Nice. And. Uh, I have a model of a car that I'll use to sit on top. And usually, this thing can rock around and move a lot. So what I like to do is you could stick a thumbtack in there to kind of hold hollow objects in place more. But the best thing to do is just to take some of this polymer clay and make a nice seal around the edges of the, the car. So wherever it's touching, just stick a little clay, and then press the car down. And that's not going anywhere. Very nice. Um, oh, and for objects that you want to put on the vacuum former, there are uh, some requirements. So if you look at this car, you'll notice that there's not a lot of places where the vacuum would have to, or the plastic would have to go up under the car. And that's good. So if I were to use something like this brain, uh, it's round. And so I would have to put it on here. The vacuum plastic would have to go up under this edge here. And it's actually very hard to get your original object back without destroying it. So you don't really want to do that. Um, another thing is like this little robot toy here. You can see he's got some intricate things, his little graspers here, uh, his little headlights up the top. Nice. Uh, if I were to put him on here, he would not vacuum form very well. You could see the, if I put him like this, the plastic would have to go up under his head. It would, you know, it, it would be very hard to get that out of there without destroying it. So mm -hmm. what you want is something that's got what's called a draft angle. If you look at this car, a draft angle is like a slope 
on all of the edges of the, the car. And you kind of have that on almost every angle of this particular toy. And so... Gotcha. So yeah. what about the mirrors in the car? How did you get the car out without destroying the object? Oh, so to, to get the car out of this one, uh, because of the draft angles, the only thing that actually keeps the car in the plastic is these little mirrors on the side. And so if I show, can you see the mirrors here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the only thing that keeps it in there. So once the plastic cools all the way, you can just kind of spread it apart a little bit and oh, okay. it falls right out usually. Gotcha. Um, nice. With the brain, I have to actually cut about half of it off to be able to get the brain out. And, okay. um, and But there's a couple of things you could do. What you could do is like a two-part mold. You can put a bunch of plas or, uh, plastic, but you could put a bunch of uh, clay around this about halfway and just do half of the top mold. And then when that's done, flip it upside down and do the bottom half. And then you could mate those two with some super glue or something like that um, to make your mold. Okay. Um, speaking of super glue, uh, one of our campers was wondering, could you use hot glue or any other type of glue to seal it onto the surface? Ah, yes. You could use hot glue or something like that. Um, the issue with that would be it would be almost semi-permanent uh, because this is some plastic that it doesn't handle really hot stuff very well. Mm -hmm. um, and hot glue will melt probably whenever you heat up the plastic to, to put on top it will actually melt the glue and so it will become loose and wobble too much okay. Um, okay. what about hot glue for actually assembling the vacuum former itself uh, yeah you could use hot glue um, for sealing the edges here and okay. I had at one point tried to build a larger one with a trash can and a, a cookie sheet uh, again, out of just found objects. It didn't work out too well, but uh, I used some silicone caulk around the edge, and hot glue would have been just as good. So that's a, that's a really good idea to, to use it down here, because this is part of the away from the heat. So, gotcha. But, uh, so now I have my object ready to go. I'm going to set up my frames here with the plastic. And so what I have is as stated before, it's just a panel off of a one-gallon jug, but it's not perfectly flat. You can see it's kind of got this bow at the top, kind of comes in at the top. Right. Mm -hmm. um, what I usually like to do is take some scissors and just cut along the angles that you can see here in the plastic for maybe, I don't know, two inches or so. It doesn't, it's not very precise. And you just kind of want to do something to give it a little bit of relief. Okay, so you can get the entire sheet flat, is that right? Exactly, yes. Okay. Uh, the flatness will help the entire model uh, basically suction down nicely. So now I can flatten this out really easily. And there's not a problem with that there's like slits in the plastic? Oh, no, no, because uh, we're not going to use the entire plastic piece. There's just a section in the center that we're going to be using. And uh, the other stuff will be cut off, actually, as excess. Mm -hmm. so, oh, okay. And does um, it affect, like, the vacuuming part? Not really, because, again, if you look, the peanut butter jar is about as big as that circle. I'm not sure if you can really make that out. But there's a little tiny circle there. So the peanut butter jar lid is pretty far away from the slits whenever I put it in this frame. Okay. So there, there should be plenty of room there. So basically, you just take some kind of uh, holding mechanism. I've seen people use picture frames or um, like screen window material. Uh, I just use some popsicle sticks and clamp the plastic between the two. And again, you can use binder clips for this part. I use these little hobby clamps that I found. And uh, I'm not sure if you could tell, but these are a little deformed from years of use. Yeah. Uh, so do be careful in choosing what you are, are making your frame and clamps out of. So now, lift this up. The next step is to heat this plastic. As you can see now, it's kind of a milky white color. Uh, I'm going to heat it with a heat gun. 
And a heat gun is just like a hair dryer, but it gets like 400 degrees, so way hotter. You don't want this touching your body. It will burn you pretty good. So this is, again, the part where you want adult supervision or adult help. Um, but basically what you're going to do is hold this frame in one hand with pliers or something to keep your hands away from the hot air. And you're going to... I'm going to get this ready to go here. You're going to heat up the plastic using the heat gun. And I'll do it. Uh, you can see when it's ready to go, what will happen is this particular type of plastic is high-density polyethylene, HDPE. Um, when it's starting to heat up, it will actually turn clear. And you know when it's definitely ready to go whenever there's... Um, if I hold it this way, it sags a little bit or actually it, it kind of blows like a kind of like a bubble from the heat gun air. So mm -hmm. you can see it's a very small bubble, but uh, you'll still be able to see it. So let's see if we can get this quickly. And you want to do it so that it's fairly evenly distributed in the heat. If you just hold the heat gun in one spot for too long, it'll actually melt a hole through it. So it's starting to deform, and you can see it's starting to yeah. turn a little. There it goes. There we go. That's awesome. And how far away are you holding that heat gun, Adam? Um, between like so 8 and 12 inches or so. Yeah. yeah. And if you want to focus in on a spot, you can focus in on a spot, move to another spot. But you never want to hold it in one place for too long. Okay. So can you see the bubble there? It's starting to, if I move yeah. the oh, air. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Now, you want this spot to be at least as big as where you're trying to cover uh, the vacuum former um, area, the, the workpiece. Um, some people use an oven to heat this up. I prefer doing it with a heat gun. You get better control. So okay. here we go. Okay. You can see that's a nice bubble. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm actually going to bend this screen down so you can watch it happen here. Heat this up again real quick before I put it on. Nice. And are, you guys, are you guys seeing the plastic move around? Yeah, I love how you can just Pretty see cool. it like bubble oh, up behind here it. Here we go. Okay, Whoa. here it goes. Whoa. Oh, it's still a little liquidy, so... Uh, you kind of hold it in place for just a second. That was so fast. <laughs> yeah, that was awesome. It's pretty instant. And, and when you get the heat just right, you can see the wheel wells of the car, it actually sucked in, and it stretched the plastic so much that it tore holes in it. So that it made a little whistle sound at the end there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and sometimes it actually takes a couple of hits of the vacuum. So turn it on. If you notice when you turn it off that it starts to kind of release a little, hit it again because it's not cool enough yet. Okay. Um, and you just want to let it sit there for a little while. Usually hold it in place until it's starting to start uh, look milky again. And that means that it's starting to solidify. And now I could take off the car. And the car is inside the plastic <laughs> model so far. So I'm going to remove this. It's still fairly hot. So usually what I do is set this to the side as I work on maybe another piece or something. Okay. But you can see, uh, I think the detail is pretty good on this one. Um, Looks great. Yeah, you can That's even awesome. actually get resolution so, so good that you can see where the stickers are on this car. <laughs> wow. So, <laughs> nice. Yeah. That's pretty so, impressive for uh, recycled materials there. Mm -hmm. And so now... Um, this is all excess material. It has to be removed somehow. So usually what I like to do is um, remove the object before I actually cut off the excess because it's easier to hold. It's you know bigger, um, easier to push and things like that. So uh, this one's going to be a little tough to get out because it's actually really, really tight on there. So I just kind of wiggle it front to back push it, and, oh, there we go. All and right. So I deformed this by pushing it down, but you could just pop it right back up. Oh, perfect. <laughs> nice. 
I'm going to remove the little bits of clay that I had there. And now you can kind of look at the edge where you want to cut this piece off. And so I usually like inscribing a little mark all the way around the edge just to remove the bulk of the piece. And then to get the details like the wheel wells and things like that, um, you can kind of just go in with an X-Acto knife or maybe even a file and kind of clean it up. So do it pretty quickly here. And it cuts pretty easily. That's right. it's, it's much thinner now because it's been stretched over the uh, your object. So it cuts almost Fairly easily. Yeah, it, it's Ooh. almost like when you're cutting wrapping paper and you just slide the scissors. Um, it's it's that easy. So wow. so I did a rough cut there. You can see some excess cut, mm -hmm. and then. Now it's easier to go in and just get the little pieces off here and there. The wheel wells. Um, so, um, Adam, we've got a question here. Uh, Camper Jenna is wondering, should the frame be bigger than the piece of plastic or the same size? Uh, it could be bigger. It's, it's at least got to be able to clamp onto it. So okay. uh, it's got to be um, a little smaller on the edges, I guess. Um, but it, it could be larger, like thicker material. Um, with this particular vacuum former, uh, whenever I place this over, the entire frame goes all the way over the machine. Okay. Um, if you build one out of a box, Generally, what they do is they have the frame that comes down just to the edge of the tabletop because it's it, the wood hits the the wood of the box, mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's and that's that's fine. That works as well, but you want the uh, the frame to hold the plastic on all four sides fairly evenly and and definitely flat. So if you make the frame um, just a bit smaller on the edges, then the plastic you're good. But if you want it to be larger so that you have something to grip onto over here, for instance, yeah. something to actually give you some good grip, mm -hmm. um, then you can extend it to make it larger than that. Okay. Um, now, Adam, you mentioned that you use the heat gun, which is a lot hotter than hair dryers, but could you use a hair dryer? Um, not with this particular plastic. Um, there is a, a low temperature plastic, like... Uh, it's kind of like um, the polymorph that people have, the pellets, where you can heat mm -hmm. up hot water and, and use that. Um, this stuff is called Wonderflex, and actually I, I have some at SheepGeek.com, but it's a it's kind of like a uh, a polymorph material that has a grid in it to support it, and it's actually used in the medical industry. You heat it up with either hot water or uh, the hot temperature on a uh, hair dryer, and you can form it onto like your arm for a cast or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. It's what's, probably what's that called Adam. It's called Wonderflex. Wonderflex, and we can find it at SheetGeek.com. Yes, yes. Cool. And I mean, it comes in like three foot by three foot sheets if you want it. It's it is it's really useful stuff, and it's really useful for cosplay. People make huge. Like swords and things, Final Fantasy swords. They make yeah. it out of this stuff because it's rigid, it's completely formable, and you can paint it, you can drill holes in it, you can. I mean, it's really cool stuff. Okay, um, but you wouldn't actually be able to get it uh, hot enough safely to do a vacuum form with that. Uh, but you could do something like heat it up in some hot water and by manually making a, a mold of something be able to make a, a mold. Um, it's, it's a little bit stiffer than, than this stuff is because it's thicker, uh, but it's, it's still really cool. Okay. So Adam, uh, you've, you've, uh, you've formed something now and you're, mm -hmm. you're cutting off the excess material. You're kind of cleaning it up uh, for your final piece. Um, so we've got another question here from Camper Sam. Uh, he's wondering, how well does the vacuum cleaner fit the water bottle? 
So is there something you have to do to kind of make it fit snug? Do you have to seal it with tape or anything? Yeah, it actually depends on the model of vacuum cleaner. Um, some models have the attachments that sit on top of this, this connector piece. Okay. And some of them, well, I think this one has uh, like the brushes and uh, other accessories fit on top of this piece. Um, this one is actually just about the exact same size as the top of a water bottle. Well, so what I convenient. did was, yeah, I, I just butted them together and wrapped tape around it. Uh, and I suggest wrapping tape around it just to keep it secure because you're going to need maybe at least one other helper. You might need two, but uh, you need someone to hold this steady on on a table so that your model doesn't move around too much. You need someone to do the frame. You need some hands to do the heat gun, another hand to actually hit the go button on the uh, vacuum cleaner. and. So it's a group activity, Adam. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's I, I'm cool. surprised that, that that one that I did just now came out so well because it's, it's very hard to do by yourself. <laughs> wow. But, uh, so how fragile are the molds? Uh, well, they are they're definitely thinner than the original that I have. Um, but you can see here it's uh, it's more flexible and more uh, forgiving. So I can squish this pretty well, and it'll pop right back wow. cool. to Ooh, place. Okay. So, but um, there are thin spots. Now, anything that is taller, ver more vertical, whenever you put this uh, mold on there, this plastic here stretches to whatever height. So the higher it has to stretch, the thinner it's going to be. And the thinner it is, the more fragile it is. So you can see on this piece I haven't really cut out the wheel well very much. You can kind of see that's actually a bubble that formed and, and popped whenever I was forming it. It's oh. kind of hard to see that. But gotcha. um, yeah, so that material is less than paper thin. Um, you want to try to do some nice low objects. Um, another thing that I made here is a little mask out of clay. Uh, if you look, it's very low. You don't stretch the plastic very much at all. Yeah. Um, now, you, you could use a thicker plastic to do that. This is, uh, I believe it's like 0.5 millimeters or so. Um, you can get thicker plastics up to about 6 millimeters for vacuum forming. Different types of plastics as well. So they have different uh, formulations and mm -hmm. um, different end purposes in mind, but uh, the thicker it is, the better you can you can stretch it, and then you end up with something that could be just as rigid as the original, which you can't squish very well. Yeah. But uh, personally, I like these; they're more forgiving. If you squish it, yeah. you can pop it back into place. <laughs> yeah, I like the durability factor. You can toss it around and crash it, and not be worried about it. Exactly. So, if you use one of the thicker plastics, can you heat it the same way with the heat gun? Uh. You could do that. You get it's best if you heat it on one side and then also heat it on the other, alternately. Oh, okay. That way you get a, a good even distribution. If you heat it okay. too much on one side, then it might start to bubble and get too hot, and the other side will still be kind of hard and rigid, and so you just have a really nasty looking finish on there. So, <laughs> uh -huh. um, but as I said, people use uh, like toaster ovens or even old kitchen ovens. You know, you, you just make a frame large enough, stick it in your oven, put it on with the burner on top and the burner on bottom, or depending on the thickness of the plastic, you probably just need the one on the bottom. Um, and you can see it start to sag. You, it might not change colors if you're using different, like if we're using black material, mm -hmm. it's not going to be clear. So that's not a, 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 an easy way of telling when it's ready, but it will sag like uh, like I was showing with the air blowing a, a small bubble with it. Mm -hmm. And that's when you know you can just go and pop it on top. Okay, cool. Awesome. So Adam, um, what are some interesting examples of, of uh, people's uh, molds and forms? Uh, you've done a race car, you've done a, a smiley face. You mentioned that um, some people use it for cosplay costumes, mm -hmm. uh, modeling swords or armor. Um, 
what are some other ideas to get campers rolling on? Uh, well, this is a little brain eraser, and they make um, this synthetic clay stuff that is also, when, once it dries, is an eraser material. So oh, you cool. can come up with your own neat designs, make a vacuum form of it, and make a bunch of copies of your little eraser. So that's that's a pretty neat thing that I just what's, actually... What's that material called? I didn't even know that existed. Uh, I, I think it's by Sculpey brand. I'm not sure the actual uh, name of it. But you can find it at most big box stores uh, pretty easily and definitely online. Um, but it's just make your own eraser kits. And it starts out as this polymer clay stuff. This isn't the eraser material, but it looks just like this. You can get it in multiple colors and everything. And you can make, if you wanted a smiley face, you could do that. But um, I think it'd be really neat to actually just use these as little molds. So you make one, you make a mold of it, you make copies of it, give it to all your friends, something like awesome. that. Um, that. Uh, Very cool. Um, can you, say, make a chocolate mold? Yeah, that's another thing. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned I forgot about that. Um, there are certain types of plastics that you can get that are food safe. So you can actually make a mold of this car, for instance, or a brain or whatever you'd like, and um, turn it upside down, pour chocolate in there, and once the chocolate hardens, you just pop it out, and you have a car-shaped chocolate piece. <laughs> and what's really cool is you can actually use um, different colored candies, different colored chocolates, and if you put them in the right order, you can layer it so that when you come out, your chocolate Ooh. can look exactly like this. That's a it good idea. It looks like you're eating a toy. So That's a good idea. That's really cool. <laughs> yeah. Adam, uh, I want to thank you for sharing that project with you. It's It's been one of my favorite. It's got so many different applications. And uh, definitely look forward to making my own chocolate race car. Um, All right. So uh, we should check out your website. You want to? You want to tell us about that? Yeah, okay, so I have uh, chicgeek.com. That's where I have uh, some robot kits that I make, and there's Wonderflex available there, um, and some friendly plastic, which is like the polymorph material, um, along with other kits. Gotcha. Um, and uh, you can see me, I, I whenever I have time not doing my research for my PhD, I, I try to make a blog article or so somewhere. I used to write for Hackaday here and there, so um, I'm, I'm in the maker community for sure. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. I like Hackaday a lot. Um, so let's see. We've got Rahid and Ibi who made their very own uh, peanut butter jar former. Um, you want to share some pro tips, Rahid? Yeah. Um, I think the hard part was to get it air sealed because using the uh, saran wrap. Right. It was fun to get it inside the th threads. I think it's important. <laughs> Try to get it inside the thread. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, because it looks like they plastic wrapped around the edge and then sealed it with a thin strip of duct tape. Gotcha. Yeah, right there. So. Very nice. And uh, did you two use the diamond cut method or a circular saw? Or sorry, not a circular saw. Uh, a hole saw. What did you use, Rahid, to cut the hole for the plastic? I think, yeah, we did. We did the diamond shape, and then we made it uh, more circular. Okay. After, after we cut it as a diamond. Gotcha. And and Rahid, did you follow the instructions on the Maker Camp page? Or yeah. fantastic. Yeah, I will. I will also. I would also follow the instructions <laughs> on the, this video as well. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. I like the video guide a little bit better. All right. Um. Well, I think that about wraps it up for the show. Uh, I want to thank you guys for joining us. Thank you for taking time out, uh, Adam. And um, we'll see you tomorrow for day three of Make Believe Week here at Maker Camp. Until then, keep making and keep posting on the uh, Maker Camp community page. You might just win a shirt. See you guys. Thank All you. Right. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs>